my lovely imps, who in chat put a put an emoji of your put your favorite emoji in chat if you are currently or have been a fan of the Diablo game series published and created by Blizzard Games, now known as Activision Blizzard. Put a, put an emoji in chat if you're a fan, okay? Or you used to be, okay? Because I got to talk about this real quick. I got to talk about Diablo 4, okay? And I got some... I got some hot political takes too. So if you're here for the politics, don't don't go away just cuz it's Diablo 4. Okay, everybody. Wow. Okay, so a lot of people are into Diablo. All right. I see this. I see a lot of people talking about it. All right. A lot of you are fans of Diablo 4, and I have actually been playing a whole bunch of Diablo 4 since its launch. I bought it uh, like the day after launch day. Apparently, I apparently I still qualified for the pre-order, which is kind of cool, I guess. I got some fancy horse stuff. There's a lot of stuff to say about Diablo 4, but I'm gonna talk about the political thing first, and then I'm gonna talk about the rest of my thoughts on Diablo 4. Um, because uh, I've been a, as, as many of my viewers will know, I am a recovered Blizzard fangirl, okay? I used to be the most hardcore fan of Blizzard games. I have, like, the first games that I fell in love with as a kid were Blizzard games. Warcraft 2 and Starcraft. As a kid, that was, I was like, couldn't imagine a cooler game than Starcraft when I was a kid. And I couldn't imagine a more forbidden treat than getting to play Warcraft 2. Uh, after all, as many of you will know, my family was super Christian. Warcraft 2 has a lot of demonic imagery. So I only got to play Warcraft 2 in very limited doses, but it was, I loved it. Now, as I got older and I was finally allowed to play games like Diablo, I came to quite like Diablo. And I've played Diablo 1, Diablo 2, Diablo 3, and now Diablo 4. Um, you guys know how when George Bush was president, I know that sounds like a sudden, yeah, whiplash, get the whiplash, okay? Uh, you know how when George Bush was president, there was like a like a period where every single like video game and movie had like, they called them Bush era and and music too. Like all of media had all of this, like it was, there's like a distinct thing. George Bush pissed a lot of people off. Okay. I'm about to do, I'm about to do it to you. That's right. You know, I had to do it to you. I'm about to hit you with it. Okay. You know how when, yeah, George Bush Jr. Of course, W. When, when George W was president. Okay. Uh, all, there was so much media. There was because uh, for a lot of reasons, and not and and not without reason. Like I should say, I mean, he lied about fucking uh, about Iraq, and that was a whole horrible nightmare that Americans still uh, do and should feel a lot of guilt about. Um, the 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 post 9/11 era was one of the most bloodthirsty and deranged in America's history. It showed America to be uh, basically a rabid dog. Uh, you know, we invaded a country that had absolutely nothing to do with the attacks on 9/11 and the pure justific on the justification that 9/11 happened to us. So we killed a ton of innocent people. Uh, uh, under the justification of somebody else killing a bunch of innocent people in our country. It was a terrible, terrible, terrible period of time. And, uh, 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 and, <laughs> and so uh, in that period of time, a whole bunch of media had commentary about George Bush. Uh, some of the most famous um, being like the Star Wars prequel trilogy, uh, a ton of video games. They all had like, there would often be a George Bush, like a uh, 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 metaphor character, like uh, an analogy character for George Bush in so much media. If you go watch media from, uh, you know, from the early 2000s, it's so much of it is like, there's a George Bush guy going so far as sometimes they would even have like uh, a president who looked, who like, you never see his face, but he talks like George Bush, okay? Diablo 4 is that, but for Donald Trump, okay? 
I'm serious, okay? Bear with me. I'm not I'm not kidding you, okay? It's that. Transformers, yeah, all of them. All of these all these movies did that shit, okay? But but let me tell you they they did it, okay? I, they literally made a Diablo game that was about Donald Trump and MAGA. I'm not even fucking kidding you, okay? You guys might be, right now, you all, a bunch of you in chat are gonna be like, ah, that's a, that's a, this is hogwash, that's hooey. Get this out of here, Demon Mama. I'm not fucking kidding you, okay? I am not kidding you, okay? Now there's gonna be minor spoilers, but the story of Diablo 4 blows completely. It absolutely sucks. Don't worry about it at all. You're not missing anything. But Lilith is Donald Trump, okay? Lilith is straight up Donald Trump and they bungle their own analogies really bad, but straight up, I'm not kidding you. She literally says, at one point in the game, she literally says, we will do this to make Sanctuary great again. I don't know if that's an exact quote, but she says almost exactly that. She says, uh, I'm doing this to make Sanctuary safe again or something along those lines. And they cast, she's the queen of succubuses. So she's enticing, but her message is ultimately that the strong should prevail. It's the most Donald Trump analogy that I could ever imagine in my entire life. And there's, I see some of you in chat realizing it right now. I can see it in the chat right now. I can see some of you realizing that I'm correct. <laughs> oh yes, I knew it. I knew this was gonna be worth it. Oh man, it's so wild. It's so funny. She, uh, the whole story is, is all about a bunch of random people, uh, uh, who otherwise shouldn't agree with Lilith deciding to agree with Lilith. And, uh, and she, uh, she represents a third option between the two party system of sanctuary. In sanctuary, there's the eternal conflict, the demons versus the angels. And the, the angels are, they represent like, they represent like a stuffy uh, order that, that is ultimately they're, they're, they're better for the people overall or so you think, but ultimately they're too stuck in their ways. They're the Democrats. And then there's the demons who are of course completely chaotic and want to eat you alive and kill you and all of that stuff and, and, and chew on your souls, which is obviously the Republicans. Um, and, and, uh, and Lilith is supposed to be the queen of demons. No, she's the queen of the succubus specifically. And she defects from the rest of the demons. And, uh, and she offers a third way, which you later find out ultimately would benefit the demons. Kind of like how Donald Trump pretended that he was gonna drain the swamp, uh, but ultimately just ended up being another Republican. It's, I'm not kidding you, just, I, I wish, I wish that you guys would, does that make Elias Rudy Giuliani? Yes, a, he even has black goo coming out of his ears. <laughs> yep i'm i knew it i told you i fucking told you guys and is is biden mephisto oh no actually well actually i don't think by Bi there is a biden okay um i think you're just viewing this through modern lenses as opposed to this being a pretty bog standard set of tropes this is a reach mm-mm Mm -mm. I'm sorry, I've played, uh-uh-uh, no, no, no. I've played all of these Diablo games and they definitely have a lot of tropes in them, but, in, but they've never done a third way message with a character that's going to make Sanctuary great again. Literally her entire message is that Sanctuary is not, it was not supposed to be the plaything for the for the demons and the angels. There's multiple points that could have been lifted straight out of a Trump speech. And it's so obvious the entire game, they try to make Lilith seem like the good option only at the end to be like, but you can't side with Lilith. Sorry, I, I see it, I see it. 
and you can't tell me that all of the writers at Blizzard aren't terminally on Twitter head, terminally online Twitter heads, because half of those guys are Donald Trump reply guys, or they were back when Donald Trump was on Twitter. Does Lilith literally drain a swamp at any point? I don't think she does. Though you do, there is a big swamp segment, but it's different, it's slightly different. Does that make your character Bernie? Yeah, more or less. It's, uh, oh man. Uh, D Danny Fallen says Diablo 4 completely misunderstands Lilith's motivations and why she wants to kill Inarius. No quotes about uh, about Inarius killing their firstborn son or the end killing their grandson. She just wants to kill Inarius because he, he opposes her and not because he wants to kill all of her children. Oh yeah, the writing is terrible. Guys, I'm serious. I'm dead serious. The storyline is so dreadful in Diablo 4 it actually made me laugh. And that's coming from Diablo 3 which had such a dreadful story that that basically everyone just forgets everything that happened. Do you guys remember a butterfly killed Deckard Cain? Oh, okay, okay, hold on. Let me just, let me just say one thing, okay? Okay, let me just give you some, some credence to what I'm saying, okay? At how stupid this is, okay? In Diablo 4, they give you a new old man Haradrim, okay? So the Haradrim are an ancient cast of monks. They're an ancient sect of monks who believe in, 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 in preserving the balance between good and evil through the power of knowledge. They're, they're these, they have all these ancient artifacts and, and the famous one is a guy named Deckard Cain. Stay a while and listen. That guy, Deckard Cain, you know, have a potion. That guy, Deckard Cain. He's an old man who's in Diablo 2 especially. Really, really famous character. Everybody loves him, blah, blah, blah. And they kill him off in Diablo 3, which was supremely unpopular for obvious reasons. And in Diablo 4, they give you a new old man with a funny accent who's also a Haradrim. And get this, okay? I'm not kidding you. Get this. At one point in the game, you they make you there's a whole quest line where you come across an old friend of Deckard Cain's who's like an alcoholic. And he sees your friend and he goes, Deckard, it's good to see you. And for the rest of that entire chapter of the game, the character that they wrote in calls the replacement Deckard Kane, Deckard Kane. I'm not kidding you. Just, and it's the most embarrassing thing because I feel like they were trying to be self-aware and it just failed. He just does it once? No, he doesn't just do it once. You're actually incorrect about this. I had to play through that quest line twice. He does it multiple times. You, you, there's the whole time when you're walking through the desert and every time he stops, he goes, ah, it's a good time for a drink, eh, Deckard? It's not only once. I would be willing to put money on it. It's Meshif from Act 3 in Diablo 2. Yeah, I know, I know. He keeps calling him Deckard Kane. I think the lore suffers for being set 50 years after Diablo 3. Yeah, it does. Oh, Jesus. Dango Bangle, you should send me a... Uh, thank you for the $5. Can you send me a clip for that? Uh, or a, or a, a link for that? I'd like to see that. So anyway, um, there's the funny thing, okay? Uh, uh, you can think that I'm crazy, but if you don't believe me, just watch all of the uh, just watch all of the story or play Diablo Four, and you will see how much of the like Trumpism stuff is is written into there. Um, it, it's a real deal. Thank you very much for that link. I'll take a look at this in just a few minutes. Um, yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's, listen, it's goofy, okay? Now, I have to talk about other things about Diablo 4 because this is going to be ultimately a, a little review segment of Diablo 4. In truth, 
I've actually been having quite a bit of fun with Diablo 4. Um, uh, however, that comes with a number of asterisks. I have been having fun uh, uh, playing my druid character, uh, and I actually think that there is some pretty good stuff in this game. Um, I think that the, uh, especially when it comes to the visuals for this game, it looks fantastic, okay? Really, really, really great. Um, the combat is quite fun, um, and I'm very excited for the seasonal stuff to begin because in Diablo 3, I really love the seasonal content. For those who haven't played seasonal content in any Diablo game, basically whenever a new season begins, you can create a seasonal character, which means you start from zero and you can only play that character for that season. And the goal is to get as far and as powerful as you can while the season runs. And there's usually some sort of special universal reward for it, whether it's a visual thing, in Diablo 3, there were um, seasonal sets, which were basically these wacky armor sets that would do crazy things to your build. They were uniques that would totally modify the way that you played your character. They were awesome. I really, really love the seasonal system. So um, I think that's that's cool and, and looks really, really cool and fun. Neon, tr Neon Trion, thank you for the $5. Glad to catch you, but bedtime for me. Have a good stream. Make sure you catch the VOD, and thank you for supporting the show. Deeply appreciate that. Yeah, there was a bunch of other stuff, too. There was um, pets that you could get. There were special wings that you could get for your character, which is a whole thing from Diablo 3 that they got rid of for Diablo 4, which was kind of weird. Um... And I like the seasonal system, so I'm excited for that, and I'm definitely going to be playing it. With all that said, we got to talk about, I got to criticize this game because there is a lot of problems that I have with this game. And I'm going to start with the first and biggest complaint. I already complained about the story, which is actually probably my biggest complaint, but I don't expect anything from Blizzard anymore because Blizzard writing was, especially for Diablo, they have been phoning it in for a really long time and I did not expect there to be good writing for this game um, and they didn't disappoint, okay? Um, it was terrible. It was laughably terrible. It was baby brain terrible. Oh, uh, I should I should just be, let me just fit, you know, let me just explain one more thing because I, I only said that the writing was terrible. But when I say the writing is terrible, there was a, let me just let me just give you an illustration i posted on my blue sky an illustration of why i felt the writing was so terrible i'm gonna just share that image real quick because i think i think it'll make you guys all all laugh it's it's i think this is basically how the entire uh storyline of diablo 3 felt like or diablo 4 sorry objective kill hitler time remaining five minutes and 18 seconds jake we're picking up a reading of some sort of the city can you confirm jake jake can achievement unlock go underwater with a gun it looks like you're underwater would you like help get help with swimming get help with the plot warning return to the surface too quickly a uh, returning to the surface too quickly slow ascent immediately a call push x to select press x to not die fingerless glove meter help i'm being attacked help me No joke. Oh, with the, the little the little warnings all up in here. There is a part in the game where uh, there's like a little miniature like cutscene, and it's like you must travel beyond the wrecks the wrecks of the eastern sea coast. There will be three shipwrecks, and beyond it, you will see the coffin that will take you to the dark place. Something along those lines. And while you're walking there. You have three different NPCs that are following along with you, all of them constantly reminding you to get to the coffin. And it's like, and when you get there, they're like, so you, you have a marker on your map, you have quest text, you have them telling you in the screen, in the story, the people remind you, and when you arrive there, they go, do you see anything that looks like a coffin beyond three wrecks? And they're like, there, out to the east. I think there's a coffin looking object out beyond three shipwrecks. I'm like, oh my God, enough, enough, stop, God, stop. And they, it, that's not the only time, that was just the worst time. The amount of times where people are like, make sure you go to the objective. And then the next person's like, yes, it would be bad if you missed the objective. And then the other guy goes, you fool. Everyone would know to remember the objective. And the other one goes, shut up, would you? We're going to the objective right now. I'm just like, Jesus Christ. Can you, can we please, 
the dynamic of the characters is literally that. When I'm when I'm shitting on the writing, that is the that is the dynamic, okay? There's your your gruff, rude Haradrim guy who's like, you know, you may not know this, but it's an old Haradrim secret that you can press left click to use your core skill. And then the the rogue lady is like, ah, don't speak down to the hero. Everyone knows that you can use left click to use your core skill. And then Donan comes in and he's like, yes, Haradrim, why do you have to be so stuck up? Even I knew that you can use left click to use your core skill. I'm just like, come the fuck on. Can we cool it? Can we fucking cool it? Oh, it, it actually, it actually got me all, uh, like so angry. I was, it was to the point where like, I, I, I don't know, like, uh, okay. That was the, that was the point five. Now I have to do the 1.0, the world map. Okay. The world map. Many people who are veterans to the Diablo series will know that Diablo always had a, at least when you played online, there was no static world map. Uh, you would, there were uh, bespoke zones and each of those zones would, would procedurally generate pathways through them. And some people didn't love this because, you know, it's kind of weird to move, to not have like a single map for every zone, which makes like guides and stuff like that a little complicated. But it gave a very organic feel and it meant that the games relied on that bespoke zone design. You're in, uh, you're in, uh, 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 oh my God, I'm blanking. You're in Tristram. Okay, and you go below Tristram and the Tristram catacombs have a unique feel. You're in Ked Bardu and you go uh, into the sewers of Ked Bardu and they have a very distinct uh, zone feel to them. In this game, that is gone. There is one universal world map and it sucks. Okay, I'm just gonna be completely honest. The world map fucking sucks. It is enormous. The map is huge, but can I just show the revealed world map? I'm going to show you something and I'm going to, I want to point something out. Oh God. Oh Jesus Christ. This is not a meme image, by the way. <laughs> this is from Icy Veins. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's from Icy Veins. I, I didn't I didn't look up a meme image. <laughs> okay, but honestly, let me get one that doesn't have the the large the large icons. Okay, here we go. Wait, that's is this accurate? Here we go. Okay, yeah, here we go. Here's the big world map, and I'm gonna show you something and why I cr cr criticize it. Okay, so this is the world map. Now. Looking at it, that probably seems a little overwhelming, but I want you to notice something about the design of these of this map. Nearly every area of the game looks something like this, okay? It's all honeycombs. Every single area is they take an open area, they take like a like a butterfly-shaped open area, and then they put a bunch of dots of land masses in between. But basically, you're just weaving around all of these little spots in every zone. Look, I'm not kidding you. Every single one, here you go. But just randomly shaped blobs put into a generally, you know, a certain shape. This one's like, sort of like kidney shaped. This one up here is kind of like a kidney shape, but turned upwards. And most of the zone design in the game, here you go, here's almost the identical shape as this one here with the same basic structures in between. It's very blobby. And obviously, I mean, these little areas, you can see this is just a shrunken one, but they're all basically like that. Now there's these really cool areas that I'm gonna show you. Uh, let me find one right here. Here we go, here's one right here. See where my mouse is going right over here? These areas are actually the most interesting ones in the game. There's these little connector areas. Here's another one right here where my mouse is going right now. There are these tiny, seemingly linear connector areas that are visually incredible. One of them has you walking down, weaving behind waterfalls as you're going from one area to another. It's, those are really cool because they actually feel like a bespoke area. 
that isn't just sort of a copy pasted honeycomb of of zone des of zone design. Now I understand that they wanted to make a really big world that they were going for something a little bit more MMO like, and keep in mind this isn't like I I I I this is going to I'm going to go into a whole review of this game. I have a lot of things to say. The map design, however, is not its strong suite. It does not, the moving through these zones is like, it's hypnotic in the worst way. It is, uh, there is a ton of areas where you basically can't tell where you are. You don't know outside of the like general region that you're in, there's no reason to assume that you're anywhere special whatsoever. And it kind of sucks. Actually, it massively sucks. Um, the map, as a result, becomes very forgettable, with the exception of a few key areas. And also, the outside ends up feeling a whole lot like the inside of a lot of dungeons, because dungeons follow the same basic design, just on a smaller scale. They are sort of large areas punctuated with little paths you have to run through that reconnect to each other. Every place is basically a loop, and there's not a whole lot of, like, um, you're not ever asked to move in like a specific way through any area. And that's very different from the way that it, it, it was in other games. Um, although Diablo has always had, uh, you know, tons of enemies filling up like a, a sort of death, like not a death tunnel, but like a combat tunnel. They're combat focused games. You can't avoid it to a certain degree, but this game, Diablo 4 just goes too far into the uh, honeycomb zone design. And it leads to a very forgettable world map with some areas being like almost literally copy pasted. Like for example, there is a region of, of uh, the top part of the map up here where you fight uh, drowned zombie pirates that are blue, and then down here, an almost identical area of the map, you fight drowned zombie pirates that are purple. In this area, you will fight bugs that are green, and in this area, you will fight, I think it's this area, you will fight bugs that are red. And that's a big problem for me, um, is, is, uh, you know, when you get to a world that's so big that you're copy and pasting to that degree, just shrink the world. Seriously, just make the world smaller. So that's my biggest critique with Diablo 4. Um, and uh, besides the story, obviously, which is painful, but the story is only one aspect, and I don't play Diablo games for the story. I haven't since Diablo 2. Uh, I knew Diablo 3 was going to have a rough story, and I knew Diablo 4 was going to have a rough story. Um, but uh, that world design is very MMOified. And that's actually, there's there are pluses and minuses to Diablo 4's MMOification. It is a very MMOified game. Um, there is, there's all kinds of sort of randomly generated quests. They now focus on a lot of world events and timed events. So like things will happen in the world. There's these things called hell tides where like a big zone will become taken over by demons for an hour and then it'll go away for an hour and then, and then later it'll come back for another hour and you go through and you do little world quests kind of in like a, a lot of it reminds me of, of Guild Wars 2 if anybody's played Guild Wars 2. Um, there's world bosses, there's these rotating quests that pop up on the map, and some of those are very fun. Um, I think that, that a lot of them can be kind of fun to grind um, if you're like just trying to level up and whatever. Um, however, there's an, a downside to the, the reliability of that type of grind, which is that there's a lot of um, flattening that has happened in Diablo 4. Let me tell you something that is a fantasy of all Diablo players. And if you're a Diablo player, you'll be able to tell me that this isn't true. You can tell me, but I know that it's true. Every Diablo player has this fantasy of getting a hundred enemies, a hundred little demons or goblins or skeletons to chase the shit out of you. And then you just got a brand new legendary item and you turn around and you blow them up immediately. You're just like fireball or, or you know, you set a bunch of traps or you do some crazy combo and the whole stack of enemies just blows up and you see the numbers all over the screen and the treasures flying everywhere. And you're like, yeah, you get that power moment does not happen basically at all in Diablo 4. And the reason for that 
is because that it's a static map and because of the way that enemy spawns are designed, you can't actually, look, everybody's telling me I'm speaking the truth because I know, I do. I tap into the Diablo brain because I have it, okay? Um, the, uh, the way that the spawns are designed, they're MMO spawns, they leash. For those who aren't familiar with the term leashing, leashing is when an enemy has a maximum range from their spawn point that they will wander before they automatically stop trying to attack you and run back to their spawn point. That's called leashing. They're on a leash. Kind of makes sense if you think about it. And in Diablo, th in Diablo 3, there wasn't any leash radius, I don't believe. In Diablo 2, no leash radius whatsoever. Enemies would follow you as far as you could take them. You could gather an entire zone of enemies to the point that it was lagging your game and then blow them up with a massive spell. Um, and uh, and it was a, it's a huge draw to the fun of Diablo. Um, it's just it, 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 getting a build that can let you stay alive so that you can blow up 200 enemies at once. It feels great and it's a really, really cool core Diablo experience that doesn't happen almost at all in Diablo 4. And I'm gonna be fair to the people who are really fans of Diablo 4. Um, there is one exception to this rule, okay? There is an event during Helltides where it intentionally spawns an incredible amount of enemies that is designed for being played in a giant group and you can get that fantasy in a very small dose. And two, there is a event type in Dungeons, which is a, uh, it's like a cursed shrine. You go and you activate a shrine and it's cursed and a bunch of enemies start dumping out of it and you can get that experience to, to again, in a small dose during those events. I want to be as fair as possible to Diablo 4 because like I said, I am having fun with Diablo 4 even if I can greatly acknowledge its huge flaws. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, Un really unfortunate um it's unfortunate that you can't like do that uh uh and and also in diablo 4 it's kind of um combined with the fact that now there is level scaling which is again it's another one of those changes that has both both positives and negatives okay um level scaling means that all enemies in the game um they scale to your level. Um, and there are some modifiers, like some zones are designed to spawn enemies that are slightly higher than your level, and some enemies slightly, some zones are slightly lower, but it's very flattened. The plus side of this is that you can play with anybody basically at any level um, whenever you want, which is cool because it, it facilitates social play. The downside, of course, uh, is that uh, the there's only a select... W uh, there's only a select avenue for challenging yourself um, and uh, you can't pull off some of the cool things that you used to be able to do and there's another downside that a lot of people don't think about which is that it has the effect of making leveling feel less impactful when you hit to the next level sometimes you actually are weaker than you were the level before because of the way that scaling works which to me like that needs to be fixed. There should never be a time in an RPG where you level up and you feel worse than you did because the enemy scaled up to match you, but you haven't gotten loot yet to, that, that's not good, okay? I mean, if you went into another new zone maybe, you know what you're getting into, but you could be fighting enemies in the same dungeon and you level up and they auto scale up and all of a sudden it's taking you longer to kill the exact enemy that you were just fighting which is unfortunate, really, really unfortunate. Um, and I understand why they did scaling, and I think that they didn't do a horrible job of it, and I do like that it promotes like social play because the, the playing with other people is really fun. I've been playing with, my, with some of my friends from back home. I've been playing with my partners, which has been really, really fun, and I've, I have been enjoying the social aspects of these games, um, and they really seem to have uh, you know, wanted to encourage people to play in groups, which is awesome. I, I genuinely like that. Um, but it does feel very bad uh, if you're playing solo or the leveling experience can feel really, really unfortunate. Um, and, uh, and 
yeah, those are my that. Oh yeah, there's my. This is my third criticism, and then I'm going to send. I'm going to send out this segment with the things I do like about the game. Okay, my third criticism. Why? 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 What's with this classes? The classes in Diablo three. Okay, witch doctor, monk, crusader, necromancer, sorceress, demon hunter. Okay. The classes in Diablo 4, Rogue, Barbarian, Druid, Sorceress, Necro. So the Necromancer is the one real standout and the rest are all of sort of default fantasy trope classes. Um, they got rid of Monk, they got rid of Witch Doctor, they got rid of Crusader, they got rid of um, they got rid of Demon Hunter, which seems crazy to me, um, because the 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 Demon Hunter was like the biggest the 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 it's the Demon game. So, and and that's my last criticism is I don't really know what what they were thinking. Now, unfortunately, oh wait, I lied. There's actually a fourth criticism that I almost forgot, but that I have to talk about. Um, we'll get to that. I know why they did this. And it's because they are planning on doing a bunch of DLC. So almost assuredly, they're going to be reintroducing Demon Hunter, Witch Doctor, Crusader, and Monk as DLC. Yep. So, which brings us to my fourth point. Cash shop DLC crap. Uh, Diablo 4 is... Um, Diablo 4 has launched with a cash shop for cosmetics, which is insane to me. Absolutely and m absolutely motherfucking insane to me. And I'm talking, when I say a cash shop, I mean mobile style. The the cash shop in the game has one of those screens where it has like a, it has a stack of coins and it says $4.99 and it's a stack of coins, $9.99 uh, and it has a huge stack of coins, uh, $20.99, a treasure chest overflowing with coins, uh, $12.99, a big vault exploding with coins and then the last one is like $59.99 and it has a billion diamonds blowing up in the screen literally in the game all the time it's terrible and uh let me just tell you they put some really cool ass uh 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 outfits in the uh cash shop which is heinous and an insult to all diablo players and let me tell you why um i understand why free-to-play games, which Diablo 4 is not a free-to-play game. It is a $60 full-price game. You have to pay to get into this game, okay? Um, free-to-play games, if you want to have a cosmetic cash shop, you we can talk about that. I still don't like it, but it's all right. You're a free-to-play game. Anybody can get in and you want to make some money selling fancy cosmetics. Diablo is not a free-to-play game, and Diablo is a looting game. Diablo is all about finding rare loot that you can show off on your character that makes your character feel cool, look cool, and look and, and seem awesome. It's a role-playing game. If you make a cash shop that allows you to buy the sickest looking armor set in the entire world, it really deflates the rest of the armor you can find in the game, doesn't it? And it really sucks because my favorite class this time around, Druid, has some pretty underwhelming armor options in the game. And then in the cash shop, they have some absolutely bonkers, out of this world cool designs that cannot be found in the game. You cannot do anything in the game to unlock the really cool outfits that they sell you in the cash shop in this full price game. And it's trash. It's trash. That is horrible and I hate it, and I will not buy any of their cash shop crap. I won't even look at it. It's really unfortunate. They can't do worse than the auction house in Diablo 3. The cash option at auction house almost killed Diablo 3. Like Diablo 3 was 
a disaster until uh, uh, Reaper of Souls came out, at which point it had a small redemption because they did so much crap. It's all this money, money, uh, rent seeking, money grubbing crap that absolutely ruins games like this. Have I forgotten the D3 auction house? No, I haven't. But uh, they ha But at least they got bullied into getting rid of that. They should be bullied into getting rid of the cash shop for this game because it's an insult. It's an insult that they, and by the way, let me just be clear about this, okay? Um, let me just be 100% clear. The cash shop is heinously priced, okay? I'm talking 20 bucks for a set of armor in Diablo 4, 20 real world dollars to have an armor set on your character that's this big on the screen, okay? That's, it's deranged, absolutely deranged and uh, unacceptable. It's obscene. It's one of the things that threatens my interest in the game in the, in to the largest degree. I've been having a lot of fun playing my base version license of the game with my friends, but the cash shop really sucks. And I, I, think, it's, I think in a game that is loot focused, it's an it's an actual insult to game to the game design itself. It's an insult to the genre. It's an insult to the players. The reason why people play loot games is because they can go seek out that amazing rare loot. That you go bust into some really hard zone on an extremely high level. You kill a boss and you get the coolest looking armor that you've ever seen in your life. In this game, the only way you're gonna get uh, 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 the coolest looking armor you've ever seen in your life is if you bust out your wallet which is pathetic. Let me wrap this out though with the things that I do like, okay? The class design overall in Diablo 4 is in my opinion, very fun. There are some numbers issues. There are some builds that are not viable. For example, a lot of sorcerer players as of the time of this recording on July 5th, 2023, uh, there are a lot of sorcerer players who are complaining that the way that the numbers work out a lot of builds are not viable, that basically if you wanna have any shot at being competent, you basically have to use a specific type of, uh, of enchantment slot, which really sucks. But those are things that can be fixed with rebalance. Those are things that are to be understood in a game that's as class-based as this. But the overall design is really cool. Let me give you an example, Druid. Druid has Storm Druid, where you are wielding the power of storms, uh, wind and thunder and lightning. Uh, they have Earth Druid, where you're summoning rocks up out of the ground and smashing people together. Think Earthbender from, uh, from uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender. Uh, literally, there's actually an ability dr straight out of Avatar where you slam the ground and two stones come up and crunch somebody like this. Super cool. Throwing boulders. Then you have Werebear where you turn into a huge bear and trash everybody as a big tanky bear. And they have Werewolf where you're obviously a werewolf. It's like Werebear, but you're a wolf. And you get all kinds of quick slashing abilities, uh, ways to dodge damage, self-heal and poison. I've been playing both Storm uh, uh, elemental Druid, which is like Storm and Earth mixed in one, and I've been playing Werewolf, and I've been having really fun with both of those, even though currently they're considered low-tier classes uh, overall because of their damage output. Still been having fun. Um, one of the things that's really cool is there is a lightning uh, electrocution sorcerer set that feels completely and utterly different from the storm druid. The storm druid really gives you the feeling that you're like this barreling storm building up in power and then unleashing on your foes and blowing them away. And that's really cool. Whereas the lightning sorceress is like you're moving all over the place, teleporting and electrocuting people like you're some sort of uh, evil Sith going, you know, it's super cool. Very different feeling for otherwise, you know, lightning themed abilities, but in very different directions. The, uh, the, the Necro has like really, really cool setup. Uh, I, I've been really impressed with both the appearance and the play style of the Necro abilities, although Necromancer is really, really strong right now. Um, pretty much like a lot of people are playing Necromancer because of how strong Necromancer is, but you know, whatever, that's how it is. Um, the Rogue is also very, very powerful damage-wise, but has a lot of different ways you can play. You can play with double 
double daggers where you're like teleporting around and getting backstabs. You can play with a bow where you're like bouncing out of and, and shooting down like rain of arrows. You can play where you're dropping traps and grenades and 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 uh, and shrapnel and all that stuff. Very, very cool. The variety of class design is great and they all feel very distinct. And I really, really, really like that. Um, I think the abilities look really distinct. I think they're really fun to play. Uh, oh, the Barbarian is really awesome. The Barbarian has this whole thing where they're like a walking, they're like a moving arsenal. They get f to wield four weapons at once and you switch between your weapons. So they go from like a club to like a huge zwei hander to like double weapons. Uh, uh, it's really awesome. They get to like just switch between all these different weapons, like a big blunt weapon to like a zwei hander sword that they're swinging around their head to like two weapons that they're dual wielding, like double axes and stuff and the whole like d fantasy of the barbarian is getting to switch between all these different weapon sets in the middle of battle awesome stuff um isn't the the meta necro right now minion list no uh not at least from what i've seen in fact most people doing pushing the highest level stuff want the minions because the minions can absorb so much damage the minions have an ability that lets them damage gate but i don't want to nerd out too much on the details of that um yeah, uh, there's a lot of really cool variety. This is one of the things I like most about Diablo 4. Uh, I know that there's rebalancing that needs to be done, but the, uh, the, the classes themselves, in my opinion, are really solid and they're really fun to play and they feel very different, which is great. Uh, there are definitely some issues, but I have been really impressed with how cool and fun they actually feel to play and how unique they are. Uh, playing a sorceress feels absolutely nothing like playing, playing my werewolf druid, um, and I like that. I like that there's a lot of distinction there. Um, and uh, uh, another thing that I like is the unique items in the game. Uh, one of my favorite things about Diablo 3, I know I'm going to be praising Diablo 3. One of my favorite things about Diablo 3 uh, was the fact that um, that uh, Diablo 3 had really cool, unique item sets, um, which basically they, I mentioned this before, but item sets would, would make big modifications to your um to your the way that you played like i mean some of them were totally ridiculous like they would change how your abilities looked and what your abilities actually did um meaning that you could basically unlock a totally new way to play if you found a rare item i think that's awesome and there are items like that in this game too an example i have a chest armor as my druid character that makes my default form my werewolf form so i don't play as a human anymore now i play as a werewolf and if i want to shapeshift i have to shapeshift into a human to do a human spell and i automatically turn back into a werewolf which is like really cool and I, I really like that. And I, I love that there's a bunch of those like that. There's a, there's a bunch of other ones too. Um, like there's a sorcerer, uh, spe there's a sorcerer item that, uh, that, that like turns your teleport into a, the, like your teleport is normally used kind of like an escape tactic. Like, oh shit, I'm in trouble. Let me teleport out of danger. Let me move around really quickly. And there's a, there's a sorcerer ability that turns your teleport into a gravity well. So when you land in a place, it sucks all enemies around you into that space so that you can blow them up with like a cool spell. Awesome. Super awesome, love that shit. A uh, lot of praise for the unique item uh, 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 stuff. And it's one of the parts of Diablo that still feels very Diablo-like. Like I'm hunting for this unique item that I really wanna get that's gonna change my build and make things, you know. Oh yeah, there's another, somebody mentioned there's one that turns your, your pet wolves into werewolves. So they benefit from all of your werewolf abilities and they look a little different. That's super cool. I, I love that stuff. I'm really happy that like, that they took some time to make cool, unique items. And from what I understand, they're gonna be bringing back item sets. I hear that they were originally in the game and that they deliberately took them out so they can put them back into the game later uh, as seasonal content which that does suck. However, I'm glad that there are unique items in the game that fulfills a similar role to the way that item sets did in the last game. Um, and 
as long as it's free and there's no DLC crap, uh, yeah, then okay, fine. Um, and the last thing that I'm going to say is this is a big praise for Diablo 4, okay? Big praise for Diablo 4 incoming. Ready? Ready yourselves. I know. I've been so harsh to the game. Bosses are so much better in Diablo 4 than Diablo 3. It's not even funny. And even Diablo 2. The bosses in Diablo 4 actually have design. Now, if you're like a veteran raider of an MMO, or if you play a bunch of Final Fantasy, you know, 14, excuse me, goodness, got a hiccup there. If you play a bunch of Final Fantasy 14, you might not be super impressed with the boss design in Diablo 4. However, for the Diablo series and for what Diablo is, which is a, a it's supposed to, the way this one is, is it's a mini MMO. It's an MMO that you can play in 30 minutes to an hour instead of eight hours a night or whatever, you know? Uh, the boss design is really, really good. Um, uh, there is a couple of, unfortunately, they reused some world boss stuff. I don't like that. However, um, there's also a whole, like each of the dungeons has a boss at the end that has moves that you actually have to respect if you're playing on a high difficulty. They actually have mechanics you have to engage with, which has never really been the case uh, in most of the Diablo games. In Diablo 3, they tried to do it a little bit, but it mostly just kind of failed. Uh, in Diablo 4, the bosses have mechanics. They actually have things you have to engage with and you have to use your brain a little bit in these fights. And it's really, really good. So that's one of my biggest praises for Diablo 4 is the fact that the bosses are actually worth uh, uh, fighting. And I, in fact, the most memorable first experience I had of Diablo 4 was uh, was running in, was doing an optional dungeon early on in my first character and seriously struggling to beat the boss. And the second most memorable experience I had was playing with a friend of mine, a local friend of mine, um, who, uh, where we we were we died like eight or nine times trying to clear this boss it was seriously difficult and we had to get his mechanics down just right so we could beat him and it was super satisfying when we finally did and that was only on world two difficulty when we were leveling through fresh at the beginning of the game you know now obviously i'm a little more familiar with how to build characters i don't struggle as much on most of the bosses but the fact that there are there's actually mechanics for the bosses and they're not just giant meat sponges like they were in previous diablo games is a big improvement in my book. Um, oh yes, and of course, everybody is mentioning the butcher, um, which I have mixed feelings. I, I do think the butcher is novel at first. He starts to run out of nov no a novelty, but I will say it's a very cool first experience running into the butcher in this game. And uh, and yeah, it was it's 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 cool. It's a cool it's a cool thing to get busted up by a Diablo game where a lot of the time you kind of just. Uh, blast everything that's in your way. Anyway, that's my review of Diablo 4. I had a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, uh, we, you know, Lilith is MAGA, Donald Trump, pretty obvious. You know, it's a, it's a Trump era game, uh, very clearly to me. Uh, and uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. If you think I'm way out of line, tell me in the comments below. Uh, uh, let me know what your thoughts and your experiences with Diablo 4 are. I want to hear what you have to say, so tell me down below. Um, overall, I think Diablo is a, a very fun game. The cash shop is a big problem for me, and I think that everybody should be super vocal and complain about the cash shop as much as possible and do not buy shit from the cash shop. Uh, cash shops in a game like this are an insult. Um, the story writing is terrible uh, and hand-holdy. Um, the map could use some work. However, the class design is really awesome. The core gameplay is very fun. The bosses are fantastic. So I have to say, Play Diablo 4 with friends, and you're going to have a really, really good time, um, even if it's not a perfect game, and even if there's a lot of uh, Activision Blizzardisms that I don't feel good about, specifically the cash shop. 
Uh, if the cash shop gets worse over time, I will probably stop playing Diablo 4. But as of right now, I'm having a really good time playing Diablo 4 with my friends and my partner. So uh, that's my uh, review of Diablo 4. Again, if you think I'm way off base with Lilith being Donald Trump, tell me in the comments. If you think that there's things that I missed, tell me in the comments. And of course, make sure that you're subscribed to Demon Mama so you don't miss any of my content. We're about to do a whole bunch of other stuff, but I needed to get my thoughts on Diablo 4 out there. I've been sitting on them for like a week. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all very soon.